Hi, my name is Richard Smith. I'm the head of communications for Feed the Hungry, which is the company charity that uh, operates Coventry Food Bank. We're here in the Feed the Hungry warehouse and a lot of the stuff that I'm about to show you is in relation to the Coventry Food Bank project. I'm Hugh McNeil, I'm a project manager from Coventry Food Bank. Uh, I've been involved with Food Bank now since 2014. Uh, what we're aware of is that we, um, people who need our help, um, mm -hmm. that's quite often they have more complex issues around why they need our help, mm -hmm. that it's not just about food. And what we're trying to do is give them that support and that help to get them out of that situation they find themselves in. Commentary Food Bank is one of the largest food banks in the UK. Uh, we're supporting tens of thousands of people across the city of Coventry each year. If I take you down here, this is our goods in area. So when someone puts a can of something into a food bank collection point in a, a supermarket, it will then get picked up uh, at some point over the following week by a team of volunteers who drive around the city in branded vans and they will take the uh, the food that's been collected and it all comes in to the warehouse here. When it comes in it will be weighed to check how much food has been donated and then it gets put into this area here which is our sorting area. This is food that is waiting ready to be sorted out. We get donated all sorts of different items. These items need to be sorted out so that uh, they are uh, first of all food that can be used in food bank parcels but also to make sure that it's a decent quality that it's long dated and, and that uh, it's suitable to be able to be handed out there are about 24 different categories of food so you see on the floor down here there's things like noodles and meat uh, jam and hot drinks and uh, there's a team of volunteers who will come in uh, each week and will sort out uh, the food into these different categories. As they sort the food, they'll just check to make sure that it's still in date and that it's not been opened or anything like that. I'm asking, what, what made you want to get involved in the first place? Well, actually, I lost my business, myself and my wife. We lost mm -hmm. our business and um, we ended up uh, basically losing our home and everything. And I found myself um, in January of 2014 having to... Um, pick up the phone and ask the food bank for some help mm -hmm. and uh, I was so impressed with how I was treated and everything that was going on here I started to volunteer mm -hmm. even though I was looking for work at the time mm -hmm. and through that volunteering I eventually became the project manager later that year and uh, it's been something that I've really loved being involved in I, I know what it's like mm -hmm. um, because this can happen to anybody yeah. this is the whole thing about you know, food bank is that nobody is immune today mm -hmm. from probably needing help from food bank yeah. uh, because of what's going on in, in society. Do you think, obviously, currently the cost of living crisis is a huge issue? Has that kind of affected the uptake and how much places like Coventry Food yeah, Bank are needed? It's, it's really interesting because when you look at what happened um, back about 2010 when we had a change of government, um, austerity was the big buzzword for when yeah. I when I was started out at food bank. Uh, it was the impact of austerity on people, mm -hmm. where people simply on benefits weren't getting enough income to survive. Mm -hmm. uh, that was quickly followed by um, the rollout of universal credit. Mm -hmm. uh, again, another issue for many many people, where um, you were basically cut off all your benefits for five weeks without any income. And you had to survive for five weeks without any money and then as a consequence people just were tipped into poverty yeah. and had to come to food bank that was followed then quite closely by covid mm -hmm. the war and the cost of living yeah so there's been a you know a number of reasons why people have been affected mm -hmm. um but still today you know we're, we're finding that the cost of living what's going on now at the moment is mm -hmm. probably worse than we've ever experienced with any of the other things that have happened at Food Bank. This year we've faced a, a kind of double challenge in that due to the cost of living over the last year or so, uh, we've seen our demand for Food Bank increase, but at the same time as the cost of living has uh, become, we've also seen donations dropping. 
And so we've had to change the way in which we distribute food parcels. Uh, for the first year last year, we ended up buying food to supplement uh, the food parcels because we weren't getting enough donations, we weren't getting donations in the things that we really needed to make up the food parcels. It's a massive operation that is going on and this is only possible through uh, the help of volunteers who come into the warehouse and do packing and sorting, uh, but also the food bank centres uh, are operated by volunteers around the city. So we engaged around 300 volunteers uh, mm -hmm. with our 14 food bank centres, the warehouse here, our administration, Mm -hmm. um, my my team, which is the more than food team, mm -hmm. so we we are quite a you know quite a big uh, operation now. Uh, our logistics team as well, mm -hmm. which has you know um, you know we've got five vans that are on the road, mm -hmm. so it's it's we are like a small to medium sized business. When people come in here, they don't quite expect it to be on this size and scale and I think yeah I certainly did yeah, yeah I was exactly. blown away yeah it's it's you know it's kind of like wow I wasn't expecting it to be this big mm -hmm. or this professional which is yeah. the other thing which is what we need to do we need to be very yeah. you know on the game and on the ball for what we do because mm -hmm. you know people depend upon us <laughs> so what we're doing is we're trying to drill down into the reasons why people come to food bank mm -hmm. in the first place it's it's almost like um, Desmond Tutu the late Desmond Tutu said you know, <clears throat> we've got to stop pulling people out of the river. We need to get upstream and find out why they've fallen in in the first place. And that's very much the motivation that we have uh, with the mm -hmm. Pathfinder team. So quite often what we will do is we, we will look at, you know, their benefits, are they making sure they're on the right benefit? Mm -hmm. Is there a health issue? Is there something that's been missed? Mm -hmm. um, have they been sanctioned? Um, which mm -hmm. is a big thing from the DWP where people have been sanctioned because they haven't done X, Y or Z mm -hmm. and quite often we can overturn those sanctions and particularly with the help of the English Law Centre which mm -hmm. is here in Coventry. There's health issues, there's mental health issues which are really prevalent in, in food bank so we work with people like um, the social prescribing teams from the NHS mm -hmm. to support people when they come to food bank. Mm -hmm. um, you know, So there's a whole range of organizations that we work with as well in partnership mm -hmm. to be able to give people advice, support, signposting mm -hmm. and basically just walk with them for a duration so that we can actually get them out of that issue yeah. and, and back into some type of normality. You know? Do you think there's still stigma around food, oh, surrounding absolutely. food bags yeah. that kind of needs, needs to yeah. be challenged and it needs to be talked about more? Yeah, well, so there's a, there's a couple of things that you've raised there which are really, really interesting. Um, yes, I believe there's still a stigma around the food bank and you know people relying on a charity to put food on the table. Mm -hmm. um, personally, for me, I think we need to get to a point where people have an income that meets their basic standard of living. Yeah. We need to have, you know, a, a, a guaranteed essential scheme, which Trust for Trust is running at the moment, um, where people's basic needs are met. Mm -hmm. No one, I believe, no one should have to rely on a charity to put food on the table. Yeah. I think it's completely unacceptable in 21st century Britain that people are coming to a food bank uh, because they haven't got enough income. It's, it's not right. And um, what we are trying to do through not just our uh, campaigning, uh, but you know, um, through all the, the things that we're doing, we're trying to put leverage on mm -hmm. those who make those decisions so that we can get, the, so people can get the support and help that they actually need. Um, you know, the waste of potential within people who find themselves trapped in a situation that's beyond their control yeah. is, is shameful really yeah. it really is and um, for me personally I, I you know I I think everybody's life is up is valuable and everybody should have the same access yeah. and the same opportunities but they're restricted because of their poverty. All of the food gets packed onto these pallets in these green crates. And when we've got enough food on a pallet, it will then make its way into the racking over here. Uh, this is just a, a temporary step uh, where the food is stored before it then gets sorted out. If I just take you down here. At the moment, uh, this is looking fairly 
full. Uh, there's quite a lot of food that's being held in storage. We've just had harvest and people have been incredibly generous over harvest. And so this is all food that is uh, kind of waiting, ready to be packed into food parcels. Uh, earlier this year, in the spring and in the summer, uh, we were facing shortages uh, of particular items. But this racking where you can see is uh, fairly full at the moment, uh, was pretty empty in the middle of this year. Once the food is ready to be put into a food parcel, it gets brought down into this area. So this is the, the food packing area. Here, again, we've got volunteers who are going around with shopping trolleys and into the shopping trolleys, they're making up food parcels. So these parcels will either be for one person, two people, or four people, a family parcel. And there's different items that go in or different numbers of items that go in according to the size of the parcel that uh, is being made up. When the parcels have been made up, they end up going onto a pallet like this and then they get taken all the way down to the end of the warehouse, ready to be sent out into one of the 14 food bank centres around the city. Uh, we're feeding at the moment something like 300 people a week through uh, the food bank and all the parcels get made up. We get orders in from the, the 14 food bank centres uh, and they get, the parcels get made up in advance and then we have a team of volunteers who will come to the goods out area and load up vans with the food parcels that are required for each of the food bank centres. Uh, the 14 food bank centres uh, are open Monday to Friday, sorry, Monday to Saturday, and uh, they're not open all the time, but there will be somewhere that someone can pick up food uh, every day from Monday to Friday and Monday to Saturday each week. What can people do to support Coventry Food Bank and carry on, you know, yeah. allowing it to do all the amazing work it does? Continue to support us. Um, mm -hmm. The best thing you can do to us, for us, is, is go online onto our online shop and make mm -hmm. a donation. 100% of your donation then will be used to buy food with. Mm -hmm. But if you're a UK taxpayer, we can get an extra 25% on oh. top of that through gift aid, uh -huh. which is brilliant. So yeah. that means that your donation is actually worth considerably more to us. The other thing is about it is that uh, currently we have 15 pallets of pasta and 22 pallets of cereal. So people continue to buy items for us mm -hmm. that we don't actually need. Uh -huh. Whereas if we can buy the food directly from the manufacturer, one, we can get more food for, for that money, but uh -huh. also we're only buying the food that we actually need. Yeah. And that's really, really important. We appreciate every single donation, and mm -hmm. please don't get me wrong, <laughs> every donation is valuable to us. But if you if people bought online, or if they moved their, their um, donation to an online donation, mm -hmm. we can do so much more with that donation. So what we do need from people is for them to support us all year round. We're only able to buy food if we have people donating financially and so uh, what we are doing at the moment is trying to encourage people to consider making regular monthly donations to Coventry Food Bank. One of the things that they can do if they want to is become a life giver which is one of the mm -hmm. things that we're doing where people can make a, a regular donation to us throughout the year and then we can use that to support people right across the city. So that's a little bit of an overview of how Coventry Food Bank works. Uh, this is a, a massive operation that is running continually and so we'd really appreciate uh, your support. Any money that you're able to give towards uh, helping Coventry Food Bank will go a really long way and help to feed people who are facing food crisis around the city of Coventry.